Remember these? There was a time when the only way you could really share photos with someone was to make double prints and put them in the mail. Well, thanks to digital cameras, the only thing I have to put in old shoe boxes is, well, old shoes. Hi, I'm Dave Johnson, a writer on the Windows team at Microsoft, and today I'm going to show you some cool tricks for sending and receiving digital photos in email. I like to organize my pictures with Windows Photo Gallery, so this is where I go to select pictures to send in an email. I tag all my photos, which makes it really easy to locate them in a hurry. Marking photos with an identifiable label, called a tag, makes them easy to sort and find. I'll click the Flowers tag because I want to see only my pictures of flowers. I'll choose these photos to send. Now click Email and you'll see this window, which is offering to resize your photos for the trip across cyberspace. Don't worry, it's only going to resize copies of your photos, not the originals. You can see that you have several choices, from the photo's original size all the way down to 640 by 480 pixels. Here's why you have these choices. Full-size photos from today's digital cameras are huge, and sending several of them in an email message can fill your recipient's inbox, or worse, it won't make it there at all because of file size limitations in email systems. Notice how if I attach them to my email message at their full size, the file attachment will be about 8.3 megabytes, which is really big. A good rule of thumb is to keep your email attachments less than 2 megabytes. Notice how the file size changes if I pick the smallest option. Since I'm sending these photos as snapshots to be viewed on the computer screen, I'll pick medium which looks good on screen, and the photos will be about 460 kilobytes. That's plenty small enough for email. You can see that the photos are automatically resized and then added as attachments to whatever email program you usually use. Just enter an email address, enter your message, and send it. When I send a lot of photos at once, I tend to pick the smallest size. But if my friend had wanted to print these photos, I'd send them one at a time at their original size instead. So that's how to send photos and email. But what happens when you get an email that has photos in it? Well, my dad, for example, tends to keep all of his pictures in the original messages in Windows Mail. But that's not very convenient. Check this out. If someone sends you a large photo, you can't see the whole thing in the message preview window. To see the photo the way it was intended, you can double click it and the photo opens in Photo Gallery, sized correctly for your screen. And don't just leave all your photos in your email program. They'll be forgotten there, the same as if you put them in a shoe box under your bed. Save the photos to your Pictures folder, where you can view, print, and share them more easily. You can add tags to the photos. They'll be easy to find and organize. And, as an added bonus, you can delete the email if you want to, since you've already saved the pictures. Now that you know a better way to send photos and email, don't keep it a secret. Let your friends know how to resize their pictures. Your email program will spend less time downloading your email, and your inbox will thank you.